Hi, I'm Shay. I'm Marshall. Shay, I have a question for you. Go ahead. Have you ever had to move far away for a job or something where you had to leave friends and family behind? Uh, I haven't had to move for a job, but I did immigrate from Nigeria to Canada when I was 15 years old. I had to leave a lot of my friends behind, people I went to school with, I did life with, and it was really hard to say goodbye to a lot of these people. And it, it took time to work through. And you know what, even now, like some of these friends, I'm not in touch with them anymore. Man, that's gotta be so tough, moving from Africa to Canada, seeing snow for the first time. But the cool part is that your family back in Africa still loves you and supports you. And it kind of touches on our big idea today, that nothing can separate us from God's love. And that's exactly true. So we're gonna watch this God's story and learn more about that. Why did the old woman put roller skates on her rocking chair? because she wanted to rock and roll. Hi everyone, Dewan here. Okay, so tell me, do you enjoy going on vacation? Even if it's just a small getaway. Just being able to get away from home, maybe there are some people at home that you wanna spend a little bit of time apart from, but just being able to get out there, experience something new, have a new adventure, try new foods, it's a lot of fun, right? But then you always get to that point when you're ready to go home. You want your bed yeah. and even that particular person that you're running from, you actually miss them. So when you get home, you may not give them a big hug, but on the inside, you know your heart smiles when you see them. And that leads me to our big idea that nothing can separate us from God's love. Last time we started this series in the book of Romans, and what we learned is that Romans was a letter that was written by Paul to the church in Rome. And in that letter, Paul was letting them know that as Christ followers, the Holy Spirit is active in all of us. And what that means is that it allows us to live a life that's not controlled by sin, but instead we exhibit the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So Paul's been writing about how the Holy Spirit helps us when we're weak and how God is on our side. So where we're gonna jump in is at Romans 8, 31 to 39. Let's read what Paul writes next. What should we say then? Since God is on our side, who can be against us? God did not spare his own son. He gave him up for us all. Then won't he also freely give us everything else? Who can bring any charge against God's chosen ones? God makes us right with himself. Then who can sentence us to death? No one. Christ Jesus is at the right hand of God and is also praying for us. He died. More than that, he was raised to life. Paul is sharing some good stuff there. If God is on our side, who can be against us? No one. Because of what Jesus did, he died, he rose again so that we could be reunited to God. We could be close to him again. Let's continue on and see what else Paul writes. Who can separate us from Christ's love? Can trouble or hard times or harm or hunger? Can nakedness or danger or war? What can separate us from God's love? No one, nothing. Can hard times, can trouble? It says no. In all these things, we are more than winners. We owe it all to Christ who has loved us. I'm absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. Not even angels or demons, the present or the future or any powers can separate us. Not even the highest places or the lowest or anything else in all creation can separate us. Nothing at all can ever separate us from God's love. That's because of what Christ Jesus, our Lord, has done. So that gets me fired up. What can separate us from God's love because of what Jesus did? Nothing, nada, nothing. Hey you, God loves you and there's no denying it. Just let that settle for a moment. God loves you and nothing can separate you from God's love. I'm Dewan, and that's the end of our story, but I'm looking forward to seeing you for another one. Turn to the person next to you and see if you can answer these questions before the time runs out. Tick tock, tick tock.
tock, tick tock, tick tock. Question time. Have you ever thought there was something that could separate you from God's love? What are some examples? If you could describe God's love in a scent or sound or feeling, what would you describe it as? Wow, you know when Paul wrote that not even death or life could separate us from God's love, he spoke a really powerful truth that can carry us through some of the toughest times in our lives. And speaking of tough times, we're going to hear a story from Kadia, who experienced some really hard things in her life, but through that time still felt God's amazing love. Yes, let's watch this. I see love as just showing people that you care or going that extra mile just to show someone that they're important to you. Um, you could do like small little things like maybe buying them like a hot chocolate or a cookie or just being for them when they're having a rough day, giving them a hug and just asking them if things are okay, stuff like that. So when my dad passed away, lots of people brought us different kinds of foods just to show love to us. I think it helped my mom a lot because she didn't have to make meals, so that gave her more time just to do what she needed to do. It took a lot of stress away from her. A lot of people came up to us and said that they were praying for us or thinking of us, and that really was nice to know. A lot of people offered to like have me and my sister over at their house just to give us something to do so that we didn't have to think about how upset we were, and that really made a big difference. When my dad passed away, I was still pretty young, so I didn't get a chance to know my dad super well. But like, I have a couple really good memories of him. Like often when my mom went out, we'd watch Star Wars movies or wrestle together. It was really fun. A couple years ago when my mom got sick with cancer, it was really scary because, I mean, just a few years before that, I lost my dad. And so I was just really scared and I didn't know if I would lose her. And she was always in bed and sick and that was just pretty scary. So once again, people just came and brought lots of food, just even did little things like hugging us, maybe just coming and like telling us that they were praying for us and that it was gonna be okay. And that just really meant a lot. We had someone who brought maybe like 40 lunches for our school so that we didn't have to make those after school and that was a huge, huge help. So even though I was still really scared about my mom, I just felt so loved and so comforted by all these people showing that they loved us. At first, I couldn't really understand why God was doing this and it was kind of just like, why me? So around this time, I started going to the youth at my church, and that's when I really started to feel connected with God and got a better relationship with Him. So luckily, my mom was healed and she was cancer-free, and that was just such a relief and felt like a huge weight off my shoulders. And I was just so thankful for God. I feel like this really brought me closer with my mom because it just kind of made me realize how lucky I am to have her in my life and how thankful I am for her. 
I love baking and cooking, and so sometimes I just like bake or cook for my mom to show her that I love her. I love all kinds of foods like pasta, chicken pot pie, they're all really yummy. And I feel like food's a great way to show people that you love them. My sister, we get along pretty well. Sometimes we bicker a little bit, but other than that, we get along pretty well. <laughs> Me and my mom have gone through so much, and I just think that kind of brought us closer together, and we'll always stay that way. sad things. I know that God was there for me, right beside me, and even though maybe I couldn't see it at the time, now looking back at it, I realize that he played such a big role in my story. Wow, that food looked really good that Katie and her family got. I know, I just got hungry all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. But you know what, those simple acts of love, people bringing food to them, just showed that, you know, God was with Katie and her family through that rough time. And it just shows that we can always remember in hard times like Kadia and in good times in life, we can reach out to God and he's listening to everything. Exactly. And you know what? We're going to break into our small groups right now and we're going to see what that looks like in our lives. See ya.